So Fractal Design have done it. They have made North bigger and this is North XL. And if like me, you absolutely loved the aesthetics of their North case, but find it a little bit frustrating with some of the cooling configurations in terms of fitting large graphics cards and big radiators in it. They say they have solved all these problems with the XL version of the case. So is this the perfect case in terms of aesthetics and cooling? We're going to be checking that out in this video. So like its smaller brother, North XL comes in two different colour options. We've got black with a walnut front panel and white with an oak front panel. And in each of those colour options, again, you've got two choices. You can have a mesh side panel or a tempered glass side panel. In terms of price, they're all going to cost you the same. The MSRP is 169 US dollars. So to remove the mesh side panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back, which needs to be loosened. The panel can then be pulled backwards, tilted out and lifted away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. So in terms of our front I.O., we've got a premium gold power button and we've got gold surrounds on all the other ports. In terms of the other ports, we've got separate headphone and microphone jacks. We've got two USB type A ports and a single type C port, which Fractal say should support speeds of up to 20 gigabit per second provide your motherboard can offer this. We've got a mesh panel on the top of the case and there's a leather tab at the back of it. All you need to do is pull the leather tab backwards and then you're going to be able to lift the panel up and away. If we take a look at the back of this panel, you'll notice that there's no separate dust filters and in fact are going with just a mesh on the top. Otherwise the mesh is nice and thin and most people will be having the top set to exhaust. This shouldn't be a problem. If you're planning on taking advantage of North XL's improved size and building a custom loop on it, you'll be pleased to see we've got a fill port on the top. In terms of fan and radiator mounting options at the top of the case, you are able to fit up to three 120mm fans, two 140mm fans, or two 180mm fans. In terms of radiator support, it's up to a 360 or 280mm radiator at the top. If you get the mesh version of the case like I have, you're going to get the side fan stroke radiator bracket. On it, you are able to mount up to two 120 or 240mm fans, or up to a 280mm radiator. The side mounting bracket has two different mounting locations. It can be mounted down at the bottom to improve your GPU cooling or at the top for improved CPU cooling. So if you install the bracket down at the bottom, it is going to limit your GPU width by 30mm down to 162mm compared to 192mm without the fan bracket installed. In that bottom position, depending on the height of your CPU cooler, it may or may not interfere with it. I installed Noctua's NHD15 in the build guide and it fitted underneath it without any problems. Where I did have some limitations were with the GPU 12 volt high power cable, where the fan bracket did push it back and put a significant bend in it, and I wouldn't have been happy leaving it like this. So for large graphics cards like the Strix 4080, you would need to use a right angled 12 volt high power cable. Installing it in the top position will limit your CPU cooler height and with the NHD15 there was no way it was going to fit in this position and the maximum height of a CPU cooler with the bracket installed at the top is 155mm. So taking a look at the front of the case you can see our case is a standout feature and this is an absolutely gorgeous walnut front panel. To remove it, it can simply be pulled off from the bottom. Taking a look at the back of the front panel, you can see the Fractal have included a removable nylon dust filter, which can simply be pulled off once you've freed up the three clips on one side. With the front panel removed, you can see that Fractal have installed three Aspect 14 PWM fans, although if you prefer, you can mount up to a 420mm radiator at the front. So if you did want to go with the front radiator, you're going to need to remove this access panel. There's a cap of thumb screw here we're going to need to loosen. And then with it loosened, we're going to be able to slide the panel backwards, tilt it out and lift away. At the rear of the case, it's up to 120 or 140mm fan or radiator. But Fractal haven't stopped there because to improve your GPU cooling, it is actually possible to mount an 80mm fan on the rear PCI expansion slots down below your graphics card. In terms of motherboard support, the case now supports motherboards up to A8X in size, and it's great to see that we've got two sets of rubber grommets over towards the right hand side of the motherboard. At the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets. In terms of graphics card support, with the stock fans installed at the front, it's up to a maximum length of 413mm, or if you do want to go with a front mounted radiator, it's up to a maximum length of 380 millimeters. Moving into your case's rear compartment, it's good to see we've got plenty of cutouts through to the main body of the case with rubber grommets over the ones above and to the right hand side of the motherboard. We've got two sets of Velcro cable straps towards the front of the case, and we've got plenty of cable tie down points in other locations. Cable reading space looks to be adequate at 29 millimeters. At the top of the case, we've got a four port PWM fan hub, and it's great to see there's no set of power cable required for this hub. In terms of drive mounting locations, we've got a dedicated 2.5 inch drive mounting bracket behind the motherboard. 
and two hard drive trays at the bottom of the case. In each of these hard drive trays, you're gonna be able to mount either a two and a half inch drive, three and a half inch drive, or one of each. Out of the box, the hard drive cages come mounted all the way towards the front of the case, where you're gonna have a maximum power supply length of up to 175 millimeters. The only slight limitation with the brackets installed in this position is you're not gonna be able to mount a 420 millimeter radiator at the front of the case, although you can mount up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. To mount a 420 millimeter radiator, you're gonna to have to move both brackets one slot towards the rear of the case, making space for the 420 millimeter radiator at the front but this will significantly limit your power supply down to a maximum length of 140 millimeters. We've got a nice diagram in the case manual which tells you the different locations you can mount the hard drive cages in and the effects it has on your front radiator mounting and power supply length. In terms of mounting your power supply, it's great to see that we've got a removal bracket on the back of the case and there's also a Velcro cable strap to help manage cables. Beneath our power supply, we've got a removal dust filter which can simply be pulled out from the back. What I want to do now is give you a closer look at the build I put together in North Excel. So take a look at our temperatures, our i9 14900K idled at 33 degrees and reached a maximum of 102 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test with all components in the system being stressed. During that stress test, there was up to 19% thermal throttling. Our RTX 4080 idled at 27 degrees and reached a maximum of 64 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, our PC was whisper quiet at idle with an average noise level of only 32 decibels although under load it did kick up a bit to 53 decibels. I added in two 140mm fans on the side in the lower position set to intake. This reduced our CPU temperature at idle by one degree, although it increased it by one degree under load. In terms of our GPU temperatures, there was no difference at idle and our GPU temperature under load came down by one degree. As you'd expect, having the two extra fans in the build, our noise levels did increase by two decibels at idle and one decibel under load. So not really a big benefit in terms of adding those two extra fans onto the side with the particular hardware that I have got installed. Um, the big issue it's gonna cost you, I think, is with your 12 volt high power cable if you're going with a beefy GPU like I have. And I certainly wouldn't have been happy leaving it in the position it was and actually was a little bit worried about it just in that position for the thermal testing. And really what you would need is a cable that had a right angle connector on it if you are going with such a big GPU as I have. Where I would imagine this would be quite useful if you were going with an AIO at the top, having two fans in that higher position blowing air straight up into the radiator, I could imagine that would significantly reduce your temperatures down. So moving on to my experience of building in North Excel, and it really it was absolutely flawless. I had no issues at all going with such a big air cooler. I was still able to get my um, EPS cables plugged in at the top of the motherboard without any difficulty and I had no problems at all during the build with anything. So this should be a pretty easy case to build in. So moving on to what I liked about the case, and it goes without say, the first thing I like about this case is the looks. It is absolutely stunning. And that is largely due to the walnut front grille. It goes lovely with the black color and the gold accents that we've got on the feet and the front IO. In terms of build quality, again, coming from Fractal, it's absolutely flawless. The panels coming on and off feel really, really sturdy. We've got plenty of rubber grommets, Velcro cable straps, a nice fan hub. Building in this case, everything feels really, really premium. In particular, I also really like that we've got three good PWM 140mm fans and that they're already wired up to a fan hub for you. And even better, the fan hub doesn't need a SATA connector. So that's going to really simplify the building process. So moving on to the things I didn't like about the case, and these points are much smaller, but for a case costing almost 170 US dollars, 
I think there's a few things that could definitely be improved on. Fractal have focused on improving the cooling compatibility of this case with larger radiators and um, larger graphics cards. And one of the things that larger graphics cards need is support brackets. And I do think it would have been nice if a GPU support bracket was included with a case, given that this case does have a premium price. Another thing I found a little bit surprising is that the front panel connectors are separate cables. And again, most cases now coming into 2024 are organizing these into a single cable that you can plug straight in to your header without having to worry about plugging the individual cables in. So while I absolutely love the two rows of Velcro cable straps that Fractal have installed at the back of the case, and it's certainly been managing all that cables towards the front of the case really straightforward, it was a little bit disappointing that there was no Velcro cable straps included at the rear of the case to manage your EPS cables. And again, in the case accessory box, we did have some cable ties, but no additional Velcro cable straps that you could add in yourself at the rear. And then really the final thing that I thought was missing from this case, it didn't cause me any problems because of the type of build that I did with just the arc header and the only add the extra fan in at the back. But if you were planning on installing an AIO either at the front or at the top, removable brackets would have been a nice feature to have. So we've now reached a stage in review where I'm going to tell you should you go out and pick up this case. So if you're looking for a case that is absolutely gorgeous, comes with three good case fans, a fan hub, has impeccable build quality throughout, and you can create a build that runs cool and quiet. Fractal have definitely got you covered with this case. And if you're wanting to go with modern hardware, again, you shouldn't have any problem fitting it in. So I can most definitely recommend this case, and it's a really nice improvement that they've done over the original Fractal North case. And if you're somebody like me who likes bigger cases, this may well be the case for you. So if you are thinking of doing a build in North Excel, I have made a full step-by-step -step build guide to building on it, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this review, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.